Hello, welcome. We're on our third video where I try and share with you the reasons that we should all think that the addition and subtraction formulas are awesome. Now, in the first video, I introduced how they're used. In the second video, I talked about some of the patterns here. The third way I think about why they're awesome is to try and prove them. And I'm going to prove one of them in this video. And we've got a list of six here. So I'm going to pick the cosine addition formula right here. We're going to prove that one, but we could prove all of these. And I might do that in other videos, but I just want to start with this one right here to show you just how really interesting this is. So that's our focus is right here, the cosine of a plus b. So the first thing we're going to do is write the formula out. This is the goal of our proof. We want to get that down. Okay, so we're trying to prove that the cosine of a plus b is equivalent to the cosine of a times the cosine of b minus the sine of a times the sine of b. That's our goal. And we're going to do this in a geometric way. We're going to essentially draw a unit circle, which feels somewhat natural, doesn't it? We do a lot of work with the unit circle in trigonometry. So let's let's start there. And the, the first part of the proof for me is just to sketch out the unit circle. It's a rough sketch. It's OK. And get my circle tool here. OK. So this is our goal, and now we're starting our proof. And I'm going to make it really informal, right? The first part of the proof, we need some kind of diagram to think about this. And I'm thinking, well, let's actually set up cosine of a plus b to get a sense of that, right? Let's make sure we understand what that even means. So let's say this is some angle or arc length a, right? Here's the angle a. Now on a unit circle, our radius is one, and arc length is just the radius times the angle in radians, but if the radius is one, you could just multiply the angle by one and get your arc length. In other words, in a unit circle, the arc length and the angle in radians are the same value. So I don't need to label these inner angles, I could just label these arc lengths, but I'll do both. We're looking at the cosine not just of a, but of a plus b. So let's get b in there as well. So I don't know how big b should be, but I'm going to I'll say it's about a right angle. That's easier to sketch. Okay, so it's about a right angle. There's b. And here's the arc b. So we'll get the cosine of this angle, which is a plus b. And I'm going to also then start labeling some points. This feels somewhat natural, right? Um, this point right here on a unit circle, we call that P1, and that's just the point 1, 0. Okay. Um, what about this point right here? Well, this point, to get to this point, we have to go over some x distance and then up some y distance. So you could say it's, it's just um, x and y, but we want to be more specific than that. And this is a common technique in algebra. You drop this perpendicular. Okay. This hypotenuse of this triangle is 1, it's a unit circle. So this is the x distance to get to the point, and this is the y distance. So that means that this point, yeah, the cosine, let's say, of a is equal to the x distance over 1. So the cosine of a equals x over 1. In other words, the cosine of a equals x over 1. So the cosine of a equals x. So we're in a unique situation with a unit circle where the value, the x value of this terminal point is just the cosine of a, right? You see the cosine of a is equal to x, right? x over 1 is just x. And likewise, the sine of a is this vertical distance over the hypotenuse, so it's y over 1, or just y. The sine of a is the y value of the point. So this point is at the cosine of a, the sine of a. For similar reasons, if we jump over to this point here, um, we can say that this is the, the cosine of a plus b, and I'll show you in a moment why that is. I guess I should write it in red. Cosine of a plus b, that would be that, and the sine of a plus b. Let me do better. The sine of, I'm going to move this b over, it's kind of in the way. So the sine of a plus b. There we go. This is still our arc B. And that point, to derive that, you could just drop this perpendicular here. 
Now this little angle in here is a reference angle. It's not the angle that we're actually looking for. The angle is this angle here, A plus B. But this reference angle gets us to the same terminal point as the angle A plus B, so we can use it to find uh, what we're looking for. And for this reference angle, I guess we'll call it we'll call it C. And I'll make it a different color. Here's C. For the reference angle C, because it gets the same terminal point as A plus B, we can use it literally as a reference to find the value of this terminal point. So what do we know about this angle? We know the hypotenuse of the triangle is still 1. We're in the unit circle. And again, to get to this point, we have to go over some x value and then up some y value, right? A different x and y value than over here. So I'll call it uh, x sub 1 and y sub 1. All right, it's getting a little messy, we'll get there. So the cosine of angle C, I'll write it down over here. The cosine of angle C is equal to x sub 1 over 1. And the sine of angle C is y sub 1 over 1. Right, it's opposite, it's opposite side over the hypotenuse. So then, then that means, of course, that uh, the x the x value, x sub 1, of this point and the y value of this point are equal to the cosine of c and the sine of c. But we write the cosine of a plus b and the sine of a plus b because they have the same values. As The cosine of c has the same value as the cosine of a plus b. Why? Because they get us to the same terminal point. And the cosine uh, is defined as essentially the x value of that point on the unit circle. So these, these angles are getting us to the same location. The sine of C is the sine of A plus B for the same reason. Those are interchangeable. And if I'm not explaining that well, if you have more questions about it, let me know. So now we have the start of our diagram. And if, you, if you're a little bit behind, let's get pause the video and resketch it. I'm going to now take a moment and clean this diagram up because it's way too cluttered. All right. Okay, so I cleaned it up a little bit, and uh, you'll see why in a moment, but I'm going to call this point 1, this will be point 2, P2, and this will be point 3, and we need a point 4, and I'm always interested in the history of proofs. Everything in a proof seems so clever and inventive, and especially this next step. The, the idea is we've got some things to work with, but if we go in the opposite direction down here, we can really complete this proof. And I would love to know the inspiration for that. So I, I find it to be a lovely way of dealing with this. Now, my arc for B was meant to be about a right angle. So this is an approximation. This is supposed to be equal in arc length to B in the other direction. We'll call that negative B. I could draw it as an angle here and label it, but again, we're in a unit circle. So it's the same thing. Okay. Now, I've got all this set up, what can we do? Well, once we go in the other direction here, and we'll label this point in a moment, it's going to be really useful to think about these chord lengths right here. So if I connect these two points, and then I connect these two points, 
and I analyze those chords based on the fact that they span these equal arc lengths, they're going to be equal, I can prove this formula. Isn't that amazing? Here's what I mean. So if I now take a moment to label our new point, and yes, this point is 0, negative 1. It is. It's 0, negative 1. But we want to label it in terms of sine and cosine. Uh, we could really get this proof done. So this point down here, this would be point 4. And my naming convention, I, I like the fact that the two points on the on the ends of this chord are point 0.1 and point 0.2, and then point 0.3 and point 0.4 are here connected. That helps me think about it, but you can name them whatever you want. What would this point be? Well, this point would be, um, we have the cosine of negative b and the sine of negative b, right? The way the unit circle works in general is that the x value is the cosine of the angle or arc, and the y value is the, si the sine of that arc or angle. And we have this property for cosine. Cosine is an even function, which is a way of saying it's symmetrical about the y-axis. So the cosine of any negative value you plug in is the same thing as the cosine of any positive value you plug in. So that, in fact, is equal to the cosine of b. And then the sine is an odd function, so we get this property that the sine of negative b is equivalent to the opposite of the sine of b. It's symmetrical about the origin. So when you plug in opposite values as inputs, b and negative b, you get opposite outputs. So you get the opposite of the sine. So this is equal to the opposite of the sine of b. And now let's go back to what we've done. We've drawn two chords, right? Like this chord right here spans this arc length. So it subtends it, essentially. Um, and over here, this chord subtends an equal arc length because they're both just A and B. This is A and negative B, it's the same length in the opposite direction. And there's a theorem that says that chords that sub 10 equal arc lengths are also equal. So these two things are the same. And now it's just a matter of plugging in using our algebra. And this is really the fun part because it seems like a total mess. But watch how nicely this reduces. So we'll look at the distance from point 0.1 to point 0.2 first. So the distance from point 0.1 to point 0.2 is a distance formula. Distance form is just the Pythagorean theorem, essentially, right? We're trying to find the hypotenuse uh, of a triangle between these two sides. So it's the square root of the difference in the x values. Let's scroll up to see that. I'm going to do it in the order. Um, I'll do the cosine values in point 0.2 minus the numbers here. So it's the cosine of a plus b, that's our x value, minus 1. That has to be squared, just like in the Pythagorean theorem, plus the y value is subtracted. The sine of a plus b minus 0 squared. OK. And that is our first distance. And let's start simplifying that, or distributing and doing whatever we can. All right. So the cosine of a plus b minus 1, we're just squaring a binomial. Why don't you pause the video and try it on your own? and then press play when you're ready to solve it with me. Okay, so here I'm going to distribute. It's the cosine squared of a plus b, essentially cosine of a plus b times itself, minus the cosine of a plus b times negative 1 twice. So it's twice the cosine of a plus b, and then negative 1 times itself plus 1. So that is the expansion of that. We distributed, and we're trying to simplify this eventually. Now the sine of a plus b minus 0 squared, you can ignore the 0. Uh, 0 squared is just 0. So we're just squaring sine of a plus b. So it's plus the sine squared of a plus b. Now we expanded it. Have we simplified it? Sure. Because, look at this, this is where the, I think the awesomeness starts to happen. Cosine squared of a plus b plus sine squared of a plus b, that's just 1. Right. We have a, the Pythagorean identity that says the sine squared of a plus the sine squared of b equals 1. So essentially the sine squared of something, anything, could be a plus b plus c plus d, plus the cosine squared of a plus b plus c plus d. As long as it's the sine squared and cosine squared of the same thing being added, you're going to get 1. So that reduces to 1. And then we can simplify this by saying that uh, the distance between these two points is equivalent to 1 plus 1, 2, 
minus 2 times the cosine of a plus b. It's that, the square root of that. Now that, that is the first chord, right? We just looked at this chord right here. Let me highlight it. Okay, now we want to look at our next chord from P3 to, P, to P4, those two points. So let's write that down. And uh, I'm going to switch colors just to differentiate a little bit. So from point 0.3 to point 0.4. Now point 0.3, let's scroll, let's scroll back up there. I'm going to do um, the, I did the x values first, I'll do it again. Cosine of A minus the cosine of B. We're going to use this form of the point right there. Why? Because well, we could use this this point. It wouldn't hurt us. It's just that eventually, in order to prove this, we're going to have to apply the even nature of cosine and the odd nature of sine. So we might as well just do this first. Cosine of A minus cosine of B squared. Cosine of A minus cosine of B squared. Isn't this fun? Right? We've got all this stuff. It's like, ah, what's happening? But we have to trust that this is going to take us where we need to go. Right? This proof has already been discovered. We're just following those footsteps. And now we do the sine of A minus the negative sine of B. Okay, So plus the sine of A minus the negative of sine of B. So it's just plus the sine of B squared. And again, we're going to simplify. So you might want to pause the video and then press play when you need to look at it with me. Okay, so we're expanding and then eventually simplifying this. Cosine of A minus cosine of B squared. That's going to get us the cosine squared of A minus, well, so that's cosine of A times itself, cosine of A times cosine of B twice, minus twice the cosine of A cosine of B plus negative cosine B times itself is just positive cosine squared B. And then I'm going to run out of room, so this is kind of unconventional. I'm going to kind of just write on two lines here. Plus this stuff. This is very similar in structure, except we're going to get the sine squared of A plus 2 sine A sine B plus the sine squared of B. And if we look at this, do you notice any opportunities to apply the Pythagorean identity? Do you see it? Well, I'm going to write this equals cosine squared of A plus sine squared of B, almost. But here it is, cosine squared of A plus itself, sine squared of, not plus itself, it's cosine squared of A plus the sine squared of A is 1. So that's a 1. I'm going to write, I'm going to write it over here, 1. And then I'm going to rewrite it down here, a little bit neater, 1. Then we have the cosine squared of B and sine squared of B is another 1. 1 plus 1 is just 2, so let's make our lives easier and write a 2 down here. And then we have minus 2 times the cosine of AB plus 2 times the sine of A sine of B. So we have minus 2 cosine of A cosine of B plus 2 times the sine of A sine of B. Now that is the distance from point 3 to point 4. And that has to equal this distance up here. Right? This and this have to be equal because they those are the distances of the two chords that span equal arc lengths. So we'll just make it them equal to each other. And oh, I'll just give myself some more room. I'm gonna need it. Okay. So I'm gonna rewrite this, the distance between point one and point two. I'm gonna write it as nice and compact so it fits. Two minus twice the cosine of a plus b. And I'm gonna double check. Make sure I didn't miss anything. Looks good. That has to equal this over here. Okay, extend our square root. 2 minus 2 cosine A cosine B plus 2 sine A sine B. So let's square both sides. 2 minus 2 times the cosine of A plus B. Square this side as well equals 2 minus 2 cosine A, we're almost there, cosine B plus 2 times the sine of A sine of B. Now, at this step, you might pause the video. Can you take us through to the final step of the proof to reach 
the formula we need. Why don't you pause the video, try it out, and then press play when you're ready to solve it with me. Okay, we have this mess here, but watch how nicely it reduces. 2 minus 2 on both sides is 0. Then let's just divide every single thing by negative 2. Divide this by negative 2. Divide this by negative 2. And divide this by negative 2. What's going to happen if I do that? Well, on this side, the two negative 2s will cancel to 1. And we have the cosine of a plus b left over. On the right-hand side, again, the, the, all the negative 2s divide to 1. And what's left? Cosine of a, cosine of b. And then the, um, these are going to be negative 1. So minus, right, positive 2 divided by negative 2 is negative 1. Minus the sine of a, sine of b. And boom, we've got it. Isn't that awesome? We can prove that this is always true by using a simple... Um, geometric model, simple in the sense that it's based on a unit circle and two chords, right? That's pretty cool. And just drawing the arcs out. But I love the inventiveness of this proof. And uh, if you're in my class, there's a slightly different version in the textbook. But just notice that the slight differences get us to the same place. So the geometric, the drawing itself, the exact way you set it up, uh, does offer some natural flexibility for us to complete our proof. All right, I hope this helped.